In the year of COVID, we chose in this year's World Responsible Tourism Awards to commend and highly commend businesses and destinations and organisations which were going out of their way to address the challenge of COVID. We had over 250 applications. It's a very simple process this year, a one-stop process, and that may have affected the outcome. And remember, we can only choose from amongst those who nominate themselves or who are nominated. But we had over 250 applications. There are 21 highly commended and 39 commended. You can find details on our website, but here on the video, we're showing just a, a few of those um, excellent examples of businesses which have in so many different ways addressed COVID this year. So as soon as COVID hit, one of the things we wanted to do is help our tour guides, our drivers, people who work with Mejdi, and we decided to set up a fundraising campaign where our former travelers, friends could donate to. And within a few weeks, we actually got to over $50,000 that we've been able to distribute and give to our uh, partners and vendors and drivers and tour guides and so on. But we also realized that people are gonna feel more comfortable to travel locally than internationally, and we set up trips for Americans, civil rights focused, uh, Native Americans, indigenous communities focused, because these are issues that people care about right now in the US, and they should be traveling there regardless of COVID, but COVID gave us an opportunity. Intrepid is incredibly honored to be recognized during the most challenging of years for tourism. This recognition is a real highlight of 2020, so we sincerely thank you for it. From the start of the crisis, we've been committed to rebuilding responsibly and working towards a cleaner, fairer and more sustainable future. This recognition is very much testament to that work. In 2020, Intrepid has pivoted from selling mainly long haul destinations to developing more than 75 local trips within our key source markets. We believe that in 2021 and beyond, more travellers will seek sustainable and even regenerative travel. It will be slower, more immersive, grounded in nature, community focused and hyper local. Once again, thank you for your support and here's to brighter years ahead. Oh my God, I'm really, really so happy to have this award and I'm really, really, this really, really means a lot for us as a project and it's something that I never expected because it really means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope you get to visit us one day and get to see our beautiful work. Utandu South Africa is a non-profit organization that is leveraging the resources of the tourism industry. We generate our funds through the tourism industry to support a broad range of inspiring, innovative development organizations and social entrepreneurs. During the COVID crisis, we mobilized that resource base to support feeding schemes, urban micro farms, seniors organizations, refugees, and many other programs that were implementing emergency measures during what is undoubtedly one of the most difficult years we've had to experience in tourism in, in, in a long time. When COVID struck, we realized we needed to respond to the growing hunger in the community. And we set up our food relief kitchen in the early learning center, which was closed. And we set up the station. We start chopping at 8.30 in the morning. And to date, we've fed over 200,000 meals. 
We also realized the community needed masks and they needed the entrepreneurs and little businesses needed support. So we've bought them food from the local community, those that were growing vegetables, and we supported the local seamstresses in terms of making masks. And we've made over 15,000 masks in the, into the community. Learners, we also supported the learners that had nowhere to sit and study and download their work and provide them with a bit of support to, to try and keep up with their schoolwork and their critical school grades and get through school and keep their education on track. Um, it's been a very humbling experience watching people grapple and the resilience in the community is just phenomenal. It's so inspiring. It's been, it's been uh, quite an effort over the last six, seven months to try and protect the community that we uh, at the Aga Khan Development Network have worked very closely for the last six, seven years. Uh, this is a community which has 700 years of culture uh, and we're leveraging cultural assets to improve the quality of life. But once COVID pandemic really came home, it was clear that we needed to put all our efforts out there to make sure that the community was isolated against the disease and the very deprived of them continue to have a decent living standard. When COVID struck, we at People and Places had to readdress our business model. We send skilled volunteers to work with local communities. We had to stop doing that. How could we continue to support the projects we work with? We started to talk about e-volunteers. And from that came our e-volunteering program, where volunteers can offer as little as an hour a week or they can work on a specifically outcome design volunteer placement. We're working in three countries and we're now adding two. This is an ongoing project. We see e-volunteering as a huge opportunity for the future. When the COVID-19 pandemic started to hit Africa, we realized very quickly that it was going to have a dramatic impact on us as a tourism business, but even more on the communities and the people that rely on us uh, and rely on our business for their livelihoods. Uh, there was very quickly a clear signal that food security was going to be a major challenge. Along with food security would come issues like uh, increases in poaching for bushmeat. So we took the approach of um, of going after the food security primarily and uh, we did this by getting donations in from very generous uh, previous guests uh, as well as other foundations and organizations and we were able to hand out to date about seven and a half thousand food parcels in six different african countries um, and positively affecting more than thirty thousand people through that initiative and in mundial uh, we very much believe that tourism can influence meaningful change we do our best to provide impartial advice and practical guidance to travel businesses and community-based NGOs to better protect animals and the natural environment. During the pandemic, when businesses and nonprofits are struggling to survive, Animondio has raised over £300,000 in funds to help grassroots NGOs build back better for animals. Now we must do all we can to repair and regenerate nature, reinstating the natural barrier to prevent future pandemics. To win this World Responsible Tourism Award is a huge honour and it will propel us to continue to support the industry to build back better for animals and nature. Good day, my name is Sofia Garcia. I'm the chair of the Kraus Lords Development Community Trust and we are the people of the Mir and the Sun. We are representative and I am very grateful for the awards that you gave to us and that we can have in, a, in this part of the world, in South Africa, in the Northern Cape, where there is a desert we live in and it is this beautiful place, Klaus Lodz, is a very peaceful place that you can come and visit. I thank you and very, very thankful to you 
for the award that you give to us. We try to help our citizens and neighbors uh, as we, all the managers and the owners of the hotels in Barcelona, we live here, we are from here. So our duty was to help uh, people who has a critical situation uh, with our uh, health department of the administration, the Catalan administration. So for us, it was our duty. We did that uh, with no profit at all. It is our honor, we are a it's our privilege for us. So we are very happy for uh, helping people in Barcelona that need that because we love Barcelona.